I'm going to give the lie to, or show the lie to, I guess, I guess the, the phrase is give the lie of modern atheist environmentalist spaceship earth belief. They want you to believe that the earth is outgassing. They're really trying to push that now. They want you to believe that the earth is losing its atmosphere into the, the, the depths of space that we're leaving behind a trail of gas and it's, it's floating off. Now, if you can show me conclusively, not in a skanky sort of way, but in a conclusive sort of way, that there's a trail of oxygen and carbon dioxide and helium being left behind in the earth, and you can see that in the, like, you can see that in the trail gassing away from the earth in the middle of the solar system. You can light that up with a laser or something and detect it. That would be one thing. I would probably listen to you there. But I'm not going to, I don't buy into, and I, but no one has ever shown me that. They just say, we're outgassing, we're outgassing, but they don't prove that. They just say it. But I don't believe it. But here's how I know. Here's ways that I can know that we are not outgassing. We just sent <clears throat> we just sent New Horizons out to Pluto. We took a photographs of Pluto and we measured some the atmosphere of Pluto and to the dismay of atheists and uh, to secular atheist people who are trying to push the evolution, trying to push their belief system about they have a you know, for people who don't have religious beliefs they have such deeply ingrained beliefs about 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 what is about the the solar system. It has to be a certain way, and they're expecting it. They need it to be a certain way. They depend on it, and they depend on it, and it it breaks their expectations, and they have to keep creating these new things to explain away to keep their original model for the way the universe and the solar system particularly has to be, but they had to create this weird stuff in order to, to maintain their model. What they need to do is let the model go because they're mistaken. For example, there's no way Jupiter got flung out in the back of the solar system. That's just baloney. The, the, the planets don't change places. The, the laws of orbit, the laws of motion that guide the orbits of the, of the, of the celestial bodies, the planets, is, is kind of very solid. It's, no, it's, very, it's very, very hard to, uh, to change the, the, the motion of a planet. And I, I just think that's, it's a nonsense idea. Anyways, let's get back to atmospheres. Pluto. They expected Pluto to be barren or something or just completely frozen, but it was neither barren nor was it completely frozen. The atmosphere of Pluto was still there, but it was slowly condensing. It was, the atmosphere in Pluto is actually still in the process of freezing down and condensing down. There's an atmosphere on Pluto. It's, I believe it's mostly nitrogen and such, you know, sort of a uh, gases, you know, uh, sort of light, light sort of uh, gases. But, you know, it's got an atmosphere. And the atmosphere is in the process of condensing down and freezing down onto the planet still, but that process hasn't even finished yet. It's still got I, what I would say is a significant measurable atmosphere, and it's still in the process of condensing down, and it's not even close to being finished yet. It's kind of funny. It's actually hilarious that their model can be so wrong, and they're still holding on to it. And so... They've got a real mystery on their hands, and I would be very interested, when does its atmosphere come to a height? Is it because it comes on the inside of, it comes on the closest part of its orbit, which, and it crosses paths, or, or is it always haven't been having an atmosphere since the beginning of the solar system, and it's only, it's still condensing? So that would be kind of cool and funny and neat to find out. And I don't know if you can, if it's really possible to find that out. I mean, how would you know how many cycles of evaporation and condensation have taken place? I mean, 
if it keeps getting evaporated, it keeps getting melted down, the record is kind of being evaporated every time. You don't have a record. So that's kind of interesting. It's kind of an interesting idea there. But the main point is that Pluto, the, pla the ninth planet, Pluto, I guess you could say it's the tenth planet if you count Ceres. Ceres is a planet? Great. Pluto is a planet. They're both planets, and only, only sycophants really care what ridiculous people say to say it's not a planet or it's not a full planet. No. Hell yeah. Pluto is a full planet. Just as much as the Earth, just as much as Venus. It's a planet. You know, we are not a bunch of socialist sycophants who are pandering after your opinions. You don't have the authority. Who, gave, who You proclaim yourself to be the authority. No one gave you that authority. No one has the authority to give you that authority. You don't have the say. You don't make the proclamations about the universe to decide what it is. Pluto is a planet. It is a full-fledged planet. And I think your entire belief, in my opinion, a planet is any astronomical body which has enough gravity to, to naturally pull itself into a spherical shape. So, for example, an asteroid or a comet can have very weird shapes. In fact, I believe we've landed on a comet that's actually like, it's got like a, I don't know what you would call it, the, this, it's like two orbs on the side, two lobes on the side, and the center, like the, the belt, the, cent, the, the equator, I guess you would call it, is sort of hollowed out like a valley. It's kind of cool. And, you know, you got some weird shaped asteroids. But the moon? Now, by the way, not, now moons would be similar. They don't have to be, but they can be spherical, but the moon is not the principal body. The moon is what goes around the principal body. The principal body is what principally goes around the sun. The moon is what circles the, the, the principal body. So, but a planet, in my opinion, and this is just a, a very simple definition, is any celestial body traveling around a star which has enough gravity to pull itself into a spherical shape and which is the principal body in its local system, such as Pluto Charon or Earth and the Moon or Jupiter and its myriad moons. It's the principal body which goes around the sun and the other bodies in that little system, they go around it. So in that case, by that definition, Pluto is a planet and it has a moon. And the moon, and Charon is not the principal body, which primarily goes around the sun. Charon primarily goes around Pluto, which indirectly goes around the sun, because it's going around Pluto, which does go around the sun. So, but the point is, Pluto still has its atmosphere. It's not outgassing. You would think that if the Earth is outgassing because of you know, light gases and the, the gravity's not quite heavy enough, well then, wouldn't Pluto be outgassing even more? Because the, the gravity is so much even lighter than that. And the gases are fairly light gases. They're not like heavy, heavy gases, you know. And yet, and yet, Pluto has not outgassed yet. It's not even in the process of outgassing. It's in the process of condensating. And isn't that interesting? And you can take this out. Uh, I believe Titan has, an ap has a very thick atmosphere. It's a moon of Jupiter. You know, not only does Titan have, you know, less, less gravity than the Earth, and yet it has a thick atmosphere. As far as we can tell, it's not outgassing. And I'm, I'm not so... I, I'm highly dubious and skeptical of people who say that Mars is outgassing because, I mean, I severely doubt they have any genuine observation to, to back that up. I just believe that they're putting out their idea, I guess you would call it their ideology about what they think the universe is going to shape, what is the shape and form of the, and, and behavior of the universe. And uh, I, I understand that the atmosphere of Mars fluctuates because it freezes and then and then 
melts and then freezes and evaporates and freezes and evaporates. But as far as we can tell, I want to put the screws to this belief system, to this, this uh, theory of science. I want to put the screws to it because I think neither Mars nor the Earth nor Titan nor Pluto can be observably seen to be outgassing. In fact, I think they're actually probably gaining material whenever they hit, have micrometeorite strikes. And meteorite strikes, in the case of you know Mars and Earth, we actually are gaining material. And isn't that isn't that wonderful? That means that we're actually more 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 likely to be healthy and happy and survive, not the opposite. So I mean, if I if you could show me that there's like a a spiraling trail like of gases that's coming off these planets and being blown by the solar wind to push it out, so it's going to go in an outward spiral, away, heading away from the planets. Hey, I guess you can convince me, but no one's ever shown me that. I've never, you know, I, I'm highly skeptical. Even if you see a fluctuation in atmosphere, it might only be an apparent fluctuation. And even if it does fluctuate, it might be for some other reason completely different from outgassing. It might be ingassing, such as when CO2 is absorbed by the ocean or... In, on Earth, or, you know, some other reason, or there might be some phenomenon that you don't understand. So, I am highly, severely skeptical of the concept of the Earth, or Mars, or Pluto, or Titan, are outgassing. In fact, quite the opposite. And I believe that it's actually ideological rather than scientific, and I believe it is quite possibly based on the political motivation, the political desire to create fear by proposing that the Earth is doomed. We're outgassing, we're losing our atmosphere, we're doomed to push socialism. And around the fall of the Soviet Union, the socialist ec economists realized, you know what? Socialism, as an economic system, they admitted it. Yeah, it doesn't work. We admit that it doesn't work. But we still need to control the people. They, yeah, our, our, our economics doesn't work, but we still, need, we still need to control the people. We need that control. We need that social control. We need this ideology. So let's connect it with environmentalism and say that the earth is doomed. The earth, we're killing the earth. The earth is dying to create fear in order to drive, in, in order to drive the ideology, in order to drive the politic, in order to create social and economic control because they still believed that we needed social and economic control, but it's being based on something that's not really so true. And in, yes, climate changes, but I don't believe it's headed in one direction. I believe it fluctuates up and down. And if you look at the temperature uh, graphs of history, temperature goes up and down and it's sort of spiking in a, a sharply peaked sine wave. And I'm not so sure that we're actually creating a permanent damaging effect on the Earth. I think that we're actually okay. So, and we actually, I think right now, we're on the downturn. We're on the downward s sl uh, slope of our current sine wave. So, thank you for listening to me talk about the solar system. God bless you, and I'm glad that you found this interesting.